Okay, so we're going to run um, a, a GCM, a very famous GCM, in fact. Uh, this is uh, the GCM uh, that was constructed back in the uh, mid-1980s, uh, which was used for a number of very uh, famous uh, climate modeling experiments um, by James Hansen and his group at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies that we'll be talking about a little bit more um, uh, later on in this lesson. Uh, so that model um, has uh, actually been taken and put in a format that can be run on a PC, on a Mac or a PC. Um, of course, uh, by uh, modern standards, the computational uh, requirements of uh, climate models uh, written in the 1980s uh, are far exceeded by current-day state-of-the-art models. Um, but uh, because uh, they are a couple decades old, um, they can, in fact, be run fairly efficiently now on simple laptops and PCs, but like we're going to do. Um, now, this uh, model is available at the website edgcm.com. Uh, I would have had uh, students in the class download the model and run it themselves. Um, that was possible a few years ago. Unfortunately, now you actually have to pay to obtain the model, and so I will be doing some experiments with the model, um, and uh, you will be watching me do these experiments uh, rather than actually downloading it and running it yourself, uh, but if you felt so uh, motivated, um, you could indeed download this climate model and do the very same sorts of experiments that we're doing right here on your PC or your Mac or uh, whatever uh, computer you have. So let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to uh, look at this uh, doubled CO2 experiment. If we click here, we can get some information about what that experiment is. Uh, it basically takes the CO2 concentration from 1958 and instantaneously doubles that CO2 concentration. And, and then we see how the climate model responds to that uh, sudden increase in CO2. Uh, now, because of the uh, presence of an ocean, a large ocean that has a uh, large uh, thermal capacity, um, in this model, uh, it takes quite a bit of time for the climate model to equilibrate to that increase in CO2 concentrations. In fact, uh, several decades to near a century. So uh, this um, underscores the point that um, when we're looking at transient climate change, uh, whether we're looking at observations or looking at the results of a climate model, uh, we are in fact observing a system uh, that is not in equilibrium and that might take uh, quite a bit of time uh, to equilibrate to whatever change in forcing is imposed. So ultimately, uh, we know that this model will warm uh, the amount uh, that is consistent with the sensitivity of the model in response to that CO2 doubling, uh, but it will not achieve that equilibrium warming for several decades, again, to nearly a century. And so what I'm going to do now is actually continue a run of that model that I started previously. And I'm just going to click. On that. And I should be able to run 